Hello everyone. I know I am a little late on this, but I am doing Gosh OG's Too Spooky BJD Monster Tag. So I figured since it's Friday the 13th, I was not too late to do it. So let's get started. Number one, werewolves. How has the hobby transformed you? Um, that's actually kind of an interesting question because I have found that I am a lot more able to control my temper than I used to be. Like, being in this hobby has really taught me how to put something down and walk away from it before I get to the point that I throw it across the room, which of course would break the dolls, which is why I learned that. But yeah, I thought I would never ever be able to get to that point, and I have because I started this hobby, so that was really cool. Uh, number two, vampires. BJD, yellowing, and overall aging. How do you deal with it? Do you deal with it? Um, sort of. Like, I keep my windows all covered with curtains. It bothered me at first because I didn't like the idea of spending so much on these dolls and then them getting yellow over time. But um, I actually did a lot of research on different kinds of plastics and I found that vinyl is actually quite a bit worse because it disintegrates over time. Like, it doesn't happen for around 25 to 50 years, but as it ages, the chloride molecule will react to the hydrogen in the air and form hydrochloric acid, which further degrades the doll. And then the plasticizer, the part that makes the vinyl flexible, will start leaking out. And that can be hazardous to your health. So if you, once your vinyl dolls hit, start hitting the 25 to 50 year range, kind, kind of try and keep an eye on them. But anyways, after I learned about that, the yellowing with the resin dolls didn't bother me as much because it adds a molecule of oxygen so it becomes more stable over time. And actually, one of my girls is an older doll. I, This is one of the Vox F04 sculpts. I had a heck of a time finding a body that matches the head, like a new body. But now that I found it, I really, really like her and I don't really mind the yellowing at all. Like, now that it's all the same color, it doesn't bother me. Okay. Frankenstein, have you ever modded a doll? Yes, I have. I've never- it hasn't been anything too terribly extremo, but this guy, he is one of the new five star dolls sculpts. Um, his hands are way too wide, as they used to be. They are way too wide to fit in most doll clothes. So I boiled them and narrowed them so that they would fit into the sleeves better without tearing the clothing. <sighs> And then here's my extreme dolls, Samantha. I, the one I did for her, I don't really notice the mod all that much. I try to sand a little bit of the lips down to make it a little less puffy because I was, I got her to do a specific character and she just isn't working for that character. I thought maybe modding a little bit would help with that, but it hasn't, and she's insisting that she's someone else, so I'm just going to have to make peace with that. 
What would I do if I could mod without fear of failure? Well, in the background somewhere, you probably can't see it. Anyway, I have a Vogue stall that's single jointed. I would dearly love to mod her to be a double jointed doll so that she could have more flexibility and so I could take cooler pictures with her, but that's not going to happen for a while. Okay. Zombie. Ever caught the marketplace virus and bought an unplanned doll? Oh my goodness gracious, yes. Like, last year, Five Star Dale doll was having a Christmas sale. And... So, because of that sale, this adorable little boy came home with me. And he's become the devil on my shoulder. Haven't entirely decided his final look yet. He was very much an impulse buy. But, yeah, I did not plan on him at all. And actually, this one was also something of an impulse buy. I thought she would be good for a different character, and I bought her very much on impulse. She did not turn out to be that character, but I'm very pleased with her anyway. Okay. Skeleton. My favorite body sans the head. Well, out of all of the bodies I actually own, this five-star doll one is my favorite because of not necessarily how it looks. I mean, it looks gorgeous, but just with how good the posing and um, just how well it's, it's engineered. But yeah, like it can, it can do stuff like that. Like that's without suading. So yeah, I just, I love the engineering on these bodies, and I'd like to get a few more, both male and the female. And I'm actually very happy that they offer the um, resin matching service, so if I have any other floating heads that I want bodies for, I'll definitely do that instead of going to a different company, because that's just how much I like the engineering on their dolls, and they're affordable, so that makes it even better. Okay, which magical and inspirational doll? Which dolls inspire you? Um, well, just looking at people's bald jointed dolls in general is very inspirational for me, and watching people's videos with them. But lately, this is gonna sound really dorky, but uh, I was looking through some of the old 80s horror movies on um, Hulu. And I came across one called Puppet Master, and that's actually really inspiring me to actually try um, making dolls of my own. So it was, it's really kind of cool. It's like I've always wanted to try making ball jointed dolls, but I've never done any real sculpting before, so I was nervous to to begin because, you know, you see these dolls and they're all so beautiful and so realistic and I just know that that's not going to be my level at first. But those ones, their, their style's so much different, like they're, they're not realistic, they look very folk artsy. And so, it's like, hey, I might actually be able to do that. So I'm, I'm feeling very inspired to try. So that was, that was really good. I'm glad I watched that movie. Okay, Ghost. What doll got away and still haunts you? That would have to be the Vokes Sui Ginto. That one, I didn't know about it until after it was, like I didn't get into the hobby until after that one had already passed. And, oh my gosh, the marketplace prices. I've never seen it for less than $3,000. I saw the head, just the head, with no face up once, 
for $1,000 and it's sold the next day. That's how popular that sculpt is. And I am never going to be able to justify that. So that one is one that I'm never going to be able to have unless they re-release it and I don't really anticipate that. So that's actually the character that I'm currently trying to find another way to do. That was that was actually the one that this girl was supposed to be, but she's did not turn out to be that way. And so she's given me a little bit of grief because of that, but she's still a beautiful doll. Okay. Freddy Krueger, what is your worst doll nightmare and has it happened? Well, every year, of course I live in Texas, so every year you hear stories on the news about tornadoes and fires and stuff and it's like, oh my god, what if a tornado comes and destroys my entire doll collection? That would probably be my worst fear. No, it has not happened, and God willing, it never will. And that would be very upsetting to me, but I don't know, I could probably maybe rebuild most of it. But oh my God, that would, that would be very saddening for me. Okay. Jason Voorhees, do you sew your dolls Halloween's costumes? If you did, what would they be? So far I haven't. I don't really have plans to. Although, mm, sorry, this one is from Doll Heart and it actually came on Halloween. So it's kind of a Halloween costume. It's, it's a witch anyway. I was just wanting to kind of experiment with this doll, find her look, you know. It came on Halloween, so it's sort of a Halloween costume. Okay. Chucky. Has a doll ever scared you? Well, scared, no. But there was one that I found kind of creepy. There's apparently a company in Japan that will take your wedding photos and use them to make a 3D model of your head and they'll print it with a 3D printer into a doll head and then and of course this is photo realistic both the look of your face and the color of it and then they have these kind of generic plastic bodies to put these heads on, so it kind of looks like they cut off someone's head and put it on a plastic body. And it looked, the result was rather creepy. I mean, it would be, it would have been less creepy if it had been intentional, I think, like if they'd put blood dribbling down the neck or something. But it wasn't. It was supposed to look all beautiful and cheery, and it, to me, it just looked kind of looked creepy. The super realistic head and then the body that didn't quite match and looked very clunky and plastic. It's like, ugh. Body snatchers or something. Okay. Well, there's the 10, and I will raise you one. Hellraiser, has a doll ever given you grief? If anyone is still thinking about doing this, which I kind of doubt. But yes, this girl has given me quite a lot of grief. Poor thing. She's, like I said, she's a very beautiful doll, but it's like her, her face will not work for the character that I wanted her to. And her body is so stylized that I'm having a hard time seeing it work as any other character. So, it's like I'm not sure whether to just sell the whole thing or maybe pull it apart and hybridize the head with a different body, which I'm kind of leaning towards that at the moment, but I'm not entirely sure. 
It kind of depends on finding a head that has a good resin match. And let's see. This doll has also given me quite a lot of hell because for the longest time I could not find a body that matched her. Like I tried at least two other bodies and the resin didn't match and it looked so tacky that I just hated the heck out of it. And I came very, very close to selling it on a number of occasions, but I finally found a body that works. Thank you, Magical Angel. You are a lifesaver, or at least a doll saver. And now she is magically working, and I love her now. So, anyways, that's my BJD Monsters tag. If there's any stragglers like me, feel free to add any of your own, and um, good night everyone.